All right. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to the public meeting for the memorandum of agreement uh, for the I-26 connector project. Uh, today's meeting or this morning's meeting is to uh, basically a virtual meeting to discuss the mitigation for two adversely affected historic properties. The purpose of this meeting is to produce a memorandum of agreement between the North Carolina State Historic Preservation Office, Federal Highway Administration, and the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Now, just before we get started, and I pass it over to Mary Pope, I want to cover some ground rules and uh, to set expectations for this public meeting. Um, first, uh, make sure you close all your applications and make sure that you have the best experience uh, during this virtual meeting. Uh, also, turn off all webcams. And to participate today, we're asking that you send your questions in through the um, chat box and um, specifically send questions to staff. So at the two prompt in the chat box, you'll see a little carrot and you can send it to everyone, to me or to Mary Pope and um, or send questions to staff. It should be the bottom option. So you select that and uh, submit your questions. And once the presentation is over, I will, uh, we will read out the questions and answer as many as possible. If we're unable to answer a question today, uh, we will respond to all questions um, prior to finalizing the MOA. So, uh, and, and lastly, this webinar is being recorded. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Mary Pope um, to take over. Thanks, Camille. Um, this is Mary Pope Fur. I'm the architectural historian for NCDOT that's managing the I-25-13 project, or otherwise known as the I-26 connector project. Um, and uh, this was originally, this meeting was supposed to be March 17th, so things have changed, and we're doing our best uh, with this virtual meeting. So uh, give us a, a little bit of slack here. It's a new format for us for doing these meetings. But in the room with me today, um, I have Matt Wilkerson, who is the archaeology supervisor um, for uh, NCDOT, to answer any questions about the archaeology, um, and also Renee Gledhill Early from the State Historic Preservation Office is in the room. Um, we have, I believe, members of the Federal Highway Administration are online, participating online. I can't see all the people participating, so I can't call out their names, but I'm assuming it's Felix Davila and Mike Dawson. Um, like we said, this is the uh, you'll need to submit your questions in the chat box. We have a brief presentation about the project and about what an MOA is. Um, and then at the very end, it's a very brief presentation. At the end, we're going to be um, uh, receiving your questions. We may not have answers to all your questions. In fact, if they're um, technical or um, something we haven't thought of before, then it will be something that we take into consideration and have to talk with other members of the staff that might be technical experts or um, also the other uh, members like the Federal Highway Administration, the State Historic Preservation Office, and other members at DOT for our MOA. So with that underway, I guess we'll go ahead and go forward with our presentation. Let's see. Jamie, you might have to hit it for me. There we go. Um, okay, I think we can go through that. That was the welcome, which I've already done. Um, so what is the I-26 Connector Project? I think most people on the line are probably very familiar with it. It's been going on a long time. In Asheville, to connect I-26 in southwest Asheville to 192370 in northwest Asheville. It's about a seven mile long project split into three sections. The uh, environmental document for this is due this month, since it's now July 1st. So these are some of the, this is one of the final pieces for the cultural resources assessment is this memorandum of agreement. That's the project map, which I'm sure most of you all are very familiar with. We did um, look for properties in all three sections, historic properties and archaeological sites. 
So we're here to discuss uh, a memorandum of agreement. And what that is, is that's part of the National Historic Preservation Act, which says that uh, Section 106 says that federal agencies, such as the Federal Highway Administration, have to take into account their effects on properties that are either uh, listed on or eligible for the National Register. So for projects that they are funding or sponsoring or licensing, um, they have to take those into account. So let's look at the next slide. Here's a quick overview of the process. This process essentially is you initiate the process. Um, so we look at what is the project. We coordinate uh, with uh, consulting parties such as the State Historic Preservation Office, Native American tribes, uh, local historic commissions, and we also plan to involve the public. Then we go through and we identify the historic properties. And historic properties, just to be clear, uh, can be archaeological sites, they can be standing structures, they can be battlefields, they can be um, uh, farmsteads. So these are the type of properties that we're looking for. And we do this in consultation with the State Historic Preservation Office, the Native American tribes, and other consulting parties. Uh, we did those studies uh, beginning in uh, 2000 for the uh, historic structures, and we've done numerous supplements over the years. Most recently was 2016. Um, so we've done uh, studies in 2000, 2001, 2002, 2006, 2015, and 2016, uh, continuing to make sure that we were covering all the properties uh, as this project kept uh, kept going. Um, the next step was to assess the adverse effects and um, in the uh, Section 106 process, properties can either have uh, be not affected, a no effect call, a no adverse effects call, sometimes with some environmental commitment, and some properties are adverse effects. And that's what we're here today to discuss because we need to resolve the adverse effects. You can see that is the uh, next section there. We look and consider alternatives and modifications to avoid, minimize, or mitigate such adverse effects. So uh, that's why we're uh, working with you. We've also filed a finding of adverse effect with the Advisory Council. That was done in Jan um, March of 2019. Um, and the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation uh, told us to go forward with the development of a memorandum of agreement. So that is what we've been doing. We also put out there, I think, to uh, some of the consulting parties, and I think it's uh, up on the project website, the draft MOA that, um, that we have developed so far. And um, you can see what an MOA is. It's, it's a legally binding document that has a lot of whereas statements at first. And then the meat and potatoes of it is a section of stipulations that says, what the parties will do in order to either uh, minimize or mitigate their adverse effects. Uh, in this case, we also included some properties that uh, had environmental commitments. So Jamie, could you give the next slide, please? Oh, well, there were two there. Let's go to the next one. Hmm. There we go. So in our particular draft MOA for this project and the final MOA, we expect to cover several properties for which there were no adverse effects that had special environmental commitments. And those are listed there. The Worley House, the Freeman House, Bowen Bridge, and a hydroelectric site. We also have an adverse effect on Riverside Cemetery, which is in the Monfort Historic District. We have several archaeological sites. Uh, for which we have to uh, resolve the adverse effects or potential adverse effects to those. And we also cover unanticipated discoveries. And that means, simply put, that there may be things that we discover um, after uh, or during construction or after the development of this MOA that uh, we need to take into account. And uh, a good example of that is that if we're going ahead and clearing some right-of-way, we might find uh, the remains of a brick kiln and that would be something that uh, we would want to uh, take into account to make sure that we weren't uh, adversely affecting that site. And if we were, how we would work through that. Okay, next slide. So there have been some ideas that have already been su is suggested to include in the MOA, uh, and those have been detailed. Archaeological site investigations are, are one of those that we've already put in there. And as for Riverside Cemetery, uh, we have heard of uh, 
some comments back from numerous people um, about vibration monitoring for the monuments, uh, aesthetic treatments for the walls, landscaping both outside and inside uh, the cemetery, uh, along our right of way and within the cemetery, and noise impact analysis. So we've attempted to, in our draft MOA, put in some of those things. And as recently as Monday, we received some more comments from uh, some consulting parties, a group of consulting parties, that actually address all three or four of these things. Uh, just to show you what we're talking about for impacts at Riverside Cemetery, we are not taking the road through roads, uh, Riverside Cemetery. I think some people, when they received their postcard and notice of this meeting, thought that the road was going through Riverside Cemetery. It's not. The existing conditions are up at the top of this slide. You can see there's Riverside Cemetery, and you can see the warehouses across the existing 1923-70, which you can also see a brief ribbon of in the background. What's going to happen at Riverside Cemetery is that we will not have any construction within the cemetery at all. Our construction will be limited to our existing right-of-way. In fact, no temporary easements will be in the cemetery either. But there will be a wall that is potentially 60 feet or more or less in height um, that will be holding the new highway up. So instead of seeing the existing road at its current level, and the warehouses, you will see a wall. And that is what uh, we're looking at, some aesthetic treatments for that wall, uh, such as um, color of the concrete uh, or um, some uh, faux stone stacking. Or uh, in some cases here in Raleigh, we do faux brick. I'm not really sure that's uh, what you would want out there. But uh, those are the things that we're looking at and hoping to get some, some uh, information on. So what ideas can you pr provide? Well, first of all, what you need to know is that all your comments, whether they're written or they're verbal, like you, you give Kevin Moore a call, he's the project manager, or electronic, they all carry the same weight. We encourage everybody to participate, and they're collected. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to collect these comments by July 17th, and then take them all and consider them by the agencies and the consulting parties as we uh, finalize and, or develop and finalize the MOA. So these are the ways to provide your comment. You can see there's a toll-free project hotline. Kevin Moore is the senior project manager on the project. He also has his email address as well as his mail address. And as I said, we request your comments by July 17th because uh, starting July 20th, we're going to start discussing those among everyone. So. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. If anybody has any questions, um, Jamil will be looking at what's in the chat and letting us know what those questions are. Jamil? Yep, I'm here. Yes, back to you. Open out the questions. Okay, we have a few questions already, and the okay. First one is from um, Ted uh, Figura. I am getting no audio, but have computer audio turned on. Okay, well, that, sorry, I didn't see that before. Um, the next question is from Zoe Shoemaker. Uh, speaking on behalf of the Joint Consulting Party Team for Riverside Cemetery and as one of the Montford Neighborhood Consulting Representatives, um, I would like to offer commentary on the auditory effects of this project. The consulting parties are puzzled by the statement, studies are predicted, uh, studies are always never increased attributable uh, to the undertaking within Riverside Cemetery are three decibels or less. And let me see. Three decibels or less are considered barely perceptible to normal human hearing. Therefore, the undertaking will not substantially interfere with the use and enjoyment of the cemetery as currently planned. The traffic noise report shows 29 
of the 68 total receptors projected to experience four decibel to nine decibel increases due to the undertaking, the 2040 build scenario. This, there are also 20 receptors projected to meet or exceed the NAC of 67 decibels, uh, 18 of which are increasing due to the undertaking. The noise impacts will thus be perceptible and disruptive. Okay, I don't see now if there's a question there, but more just a comment. Jamil, I can address that comment. We received those comments, like I said, on Monday, and we have provided them to our noise and air specialists uh, for uh, further discussion. Okay. All right. She let me make this box bigger because she continued her comments. Although we appreciate the intent behind this statement that changes to the plans are uh, after the execution of this MOA may require additional noise studies, and if the levels increase above five decibels, additional consultation between signatories and con concurring parties to this MOA will be required. The consulting parties assert that four decibels should be the threshold that triggers consultation and mitigation. Per FHWA under Section 106, some properties such as um, designed or cultural landscapes where landscape itself is the significant feature uh, or where the setting is especially important may be extremely sensitive to any change that can be perceived by the human ear. In such cases, FHWA, um, I lost my place. Uh, sorry about that. In such cases, FHWA considers anything above three decibels to be a change that should be considered uh, an effect. Riverside Cemetery is just such a revered uh, design and cultural, cultural landscape. All right, that was a continuation of the previous comment. Uh, Okay. It goes on again. Um, let me see if I can. Because current data suggests that noise levels uh, will be significant and intrusive, the consulting parties request that the MOA include specific items for noise minimization and abatement. Minimization technology should include next generation concrete services, uh, continuous reinforced concrete pavement, and jointless concrete br bridge structures. For noise abatement, we are requesting that NCDOT and or its contractor evaluate the feasibility of noise barriers on the roadbed itself, as it will not be feasible or cost effective to utilize sound walls uh, on the terrain below. All right, the next uh, comment is from Chris Gilbert. Uh, if the additional vehicle traffic increases emissions of air pollutants in the vicinity of Riverside Cemetery, it may cause increased chemical weathering of the stone monuments and headstones. Such an increase could increase the cost of maintaining and preserving the various monuments and headstones in the cemetery. Although models uh, may demonstrate an overall decrease in air emissions, um, by annual averages, there may be peaks uh, that are created during certain traffic situations that could have an adverse effect. Um, has, the ad has the adverse effect of air pollution on the cemetery um, monuments and headstones been evaluated? not been evaluated by me, but there are air quality uh, studies that are done as a part of the project, and we will uh, submit those questions to the noise and air quality uh, staff. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Lynn Raker. Um, <clears throat> 
Uh, Lynn, uh, one of the, Lynn is one of the Montford neighborhood consulting representatives. Uh, and she comments that the consulting parties are concerned that the landscaping plan as described may not provide adequate screening of the project. We therefore request the following provisions be added to this section of the MOA. One, intrusion of the project, such as grading, tree removal, and tree root disturbance will be minimized inside the boundaries of the cemetery. Currently, we will not be inside the boundaries of the cemetery with the design. Okay. Okay, uh, continuing to, prior to any land disturbing activity, NCDOT or its contractor will complete a study of the impacted area and will indicate limits of disturbance on a map. Any proposed disturbance within the cemetery property will be subject to review by the Historic review, uh, Resource Commi Resources Commission of Asheville and Buncombe County, Okay, Buncombe County, HRC, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's the same thing. And the Asheville City Parks and Recreation Department. The study shall identify the boundaries of grave sites and funerary monuments in the area of proposed disturbance. If necessary, ground penetrating radar will be used to confirm that there are no grave sites within the planned area of disturbance and that a sufficient do not disturb, disturb buffer is maintained. The study shall also include a tree survey and tree removal plan identifying the size and species of all trees exceeding um, six inches uh, DBH that are targeted for removal. Again, currently our plans show that we are not inside the boundaries, even with a temporary construction easement. Okay. Next we have um, Stacy Merton um, speaking on behalf of the joint consulting party team for Riverside Cemetery and as one of the city of Asheville's consulting representatives. I would like to offer commentary on the role of the Historic Resources Commission and City Parks Department in ensuring the mitigations implemented follow City and Historic Resource, Resources Commission standards. The HRC has been certified by the National Park Service and the State Historic Preservation Office to implement the Federal Historic Preservation Program at the local level. The Montford Historic District standards has set the threshold. Um, sorry, keep losing my place. Um, eight, uh, the Montford Historic District standards has set the threshold for review of tree uh, re of tree removal as six inches dBH. Per the standards, NCDOT or its contractor shall submit to the HRC, the tree removal and replacement plan, as well as the landscaping plan. The HRC will review the proposed plan and once approved, it will issue a certificate of appropriateness. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Merton. Um, okay, Lynn Raker again. Um, the replanting plan shall conform to the city of Asheville's parks department planting list and the recommended species list found in the Montford Historic District design standards. The plan will include mostly native trees, shrubs and evergreens that will be densely planted to maximize a vegetative buffer. This is especially critical if the wall is to be an imprinted concrete surface. Where practical, and depending on the ultimate height of the highway, the landscaping plan shall include bermed and terraced areas for optimum uh, visual screening and buffering of traffic noise and vibration. 
Next, we have a comment from Caroline Lieberman. As a 15 year resident of Montford, and someone who frequently visits Riverside Cemetery to enjoy a peaceful walk, I would like everything possible to be done to minimize the traffic noise. It will completely change the experience for those many of us who have enjoyed this neighborhood jewel for so long. Next, we have a comment by um, Julie Mayfield, uh, <clears throat> who's a member of the Asheville City Council. Speaking on behalf of the Joint Consulting Party Team for Riverside Cemetery, and is one of the City of Asheville's Consulting Party representatives. She says, I would like to offer commentary on the evolving designs of this project and the necessity of coordinating any changes with the city and the consulting parties to ensure future revisions reflect the concerns of the city, consulting parties, and the community. We appreciate that the roadway adjacent to Riverside is still in design and that the design build process allows for even more improvements. In the spirit of the last four years of collaboration between the city and NCDOT, I want to say that we must ensure that the future design changes do not inadvertently result um, in negative impacts to Riverside Cemetery. Uh, continuing, uh, to be more specific, the MOA indicates that the roadway may include walls and or a bridge at the western boundary of the cemetery. Again, we appreciate the, that designs are not final and may continue to be modified. Given the visual and auditory advantages of a wall versus an open structure, we request that a solid wall be provided for the longest distance possible. And we ask that this design objective be articulated in this MOA. If an open structure is determined to be necessary, we request that NCDOT engage the consulting parties to develop specific appropriate, uh, specific appropriate mitigation to address the greater visual and auditory impact of this open set section. And continuing on, Ms. Mayfield says, uh, on a separate point, we ask that the MOA state that the design build contractor will coordinate construction activities with Riverside Cemetery, with the Riverside Cemetery manager, and shall cease construction during services or special events at the cemetery. This is an active cemetery with events and memorial services occurring on a regular basis, and construction should not be allowed to interrupt those activities. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a comment by Mr. Dave Nutter um, from, on behalf of the Preser Preservation Society. I am David Nutter, a professional city planner and member of the Board of Pres Preservation Society of Asheville and Buncombe County. We have consulting party status for this project. The draft MOA is proposing using uh, a formed concrete wall at the edge of the cemetery. Formed concrete is not in keeping with the period of significance for this historic resource. In previous conversations and documents, well documented, we have repeatedly requested that the, the wall facing the cemetery be constructed of natural stone in keeping with the heritage and special design character, character of the cemetery. We repeat this request now. Also, in view of the adverse noise and visual impacts of the I-26 project on the cemetery, we again request that a 4F analysis be prepared for the cemetery under, under the constructive use determinations of 23 CFR 774.15. Uh, 
We also request that the MOA state that the final wall design be approved by the HRC and the city parks and recreation department. And we have another comment by Mrs. Raker. Uh, what provisions are planned to mitigate construction noise and particulate um, pollution associated with building of a uh, wall, compaction of field dirt, and other disruptions? Okay, that's a question to you, Mary Pope. I don't know the answer to that, and I will have to find out the answer to that. All right. Well, that was our last, um, I need a drink of water. <laughs> um, <laughs> do we, so that's the, that was it for the questions that we have received. Oh, one just popped in. Did Ms. Fur say in her comments that the wall could be as high as 60 feet or 16 feet? If 60 feet, I believe the picture was misleading, and that's from um, Mark Funston. Uh, it is uh, at least, uh, it is not 16. It is higher than 16 feet. It is, we don't know the final height yet, but let's say 60 is a, is a good average of what we've seen so far, and those renderings were produced by the firm that are currently doing the design. So those show it one vantage point. Uh, there are certain vantage points you get much farther down the hill that the wall looks much larger. But in order for me to give you a view of what the wall, how how far it would encompass, that's that's the visualization that I provided. All right. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Yeah, we have a few that just came in. Back back up. Okay. So the next question is from Martha Martha Bowles. I am con very concerned about the size of the construction from the health uh, from a health related perspective. The materials used to produce highway surfaces such as um, bitumen are known as carcinogens, are known, I need some water, carcinogens, while cement is a producer of CO2 emissions, a known contributor to increased negative greenhouse issues. Uh, VOC can last for months to years with weather changes. Please comment on this. I have no comment on that. Um, I guess that'd be a good question for Mary Pope. I mean, not Mary Pope, but Missy Pear. Sure. Yes. Noise and air. Okay. Well, Ms. Bowles, we'll tr get back to you. Uh, next, uh, another comment from uh, Julie Mayfield. Yes. Mail, I have a question. This is Renee Gledhill Early. Okay. Um, when they, when, when the uh, folks from Monford and from the cemetery are discussing the concerns about noise on services and events, what do they mean by events? What are some examples of events that take place in the cemetery that they're concerned would be affected by any increase in noise? Okay, that's a good question. Um, if anyone that made those comments, uh, if you would put that in the um, submit that so we can provide some clarity there. Uh, while we're waiting, um, let me, uh, Julie Mayfield submitted another question or comment. She says, Kevin Moore has indicated in an email that there will not be another meeting with the consulting parties following this meeting and prior to finalization of the MOA. Again, in the spirit of cooperation between the city and NCDOT, 
over the last four years, the city requests the consideration of such a meeting to discuss our concerns. Thank you. We'll bring that up with Kevin. Uh, next, uh, Zoe Shoemaker again. Uh, she says, I am confused by the statement earlier that the project will not impact the cemetery itself. Uh, to clarify that comment, our wall and construction activities will be within our right of way. There are no uh, construction activities planned for inside the cemetery boundary and no temporary construction easements that are required uh, for uh, our building of the undertaking. All right, thank you, Mary Pope. Uh, next, we have another question uh, by Mrs. Raker. Uh, how long do you anticipate construction to last? Will the con contractor be limited to daytime work hours or will uh, the contractor decide his schedule freely? I do not know the answer to that question, and I don't know that any of us know the answer to that question yet. Yeah, we can reach out to the division um, uh, for a possible answer there. Um, again, uh, Zoe Shoemaker, again, this is a continuance um, of her previous um, comment and question. Uh, if there is tree root disturbance, trees in the cemetery may may need to be removed and replaced. Does NCDOT agree with this statement? If there are damage to tree roots that cause damage to trees, we have done replacement of trees before, yes. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Tony, and I know I'm going to mess up this name, I apologize, Makoti, um, asked, is a, is a NGCN surface going to be required in the RFP? If not, why not, as it is, uh, it has proven to reduce, reduce noise. Oh, is that the noise reducing surface? I, I don't have any answers to that. But we will ask division. Okay. We will follow up with him. Uh, next, um, Julie Mayfield again. The consulting parties need to fully understand why any of our requests are not being uh, included in the MOA, and we need an opportunity to do so uh, to do what we've done so well: problem solve together to address both NCDOTs and Asheville. Intend to provide answers and speak to incorporate their comments. Okay. Um, Zoe Shoemaker, in response to your question, Renee, she says, I believe there are special tours of the cemetery and group visits for educational purposes. Tours, I believe. Yep. Okay. Uh, Next, we have a comment from Jane uh, Yokoyama. Yokoyama, thank you for taking my comments. I live in Montfort and love visiting uh, the Riverside Cemetery. Whenever I visit the cemetery, I see many people from all walks of life and ages who enjoy walking around the premises. My question is what type of landscaping is planned to reduce the impact of noise from the expansion of I-26, will uh, the will be the public will the public be able to see the final landscaping plans and make a comment? I also agree with Julie Mayfield and their um, and their every attempt uh, should be made to I believe it should be and that every attempt should be made to cease construction when active services are being held. Uh, again, Zoe Shoemaker, is, if there is root damage, trees will need to be removed. That was more of a, just a comment. Uh, 
Um, she says, please address the question about tree root damage. And we are not having any construction within the boundaries of the cemetery. That's all I can answer right now. Okay. All right. Uh, Julie Mayfield says, thank you, Mary Poe. Uh, next, we have Michael McDonough. Uh, can we assume that there will be no high mass lighting next to the cemetery that will spill light into the cemetery at night? That's a good question. I saw a question earlier about lighting, uh, and that is something we are going to take to the specialists, the uh, roadway design specialists and the lighting specialists. All right. And the last comment we have right now, um, oh, we got another one just popped up. Uh, Zoe Shoemaker said you did in all caps. Um, it must have been in response to, I assume, construction activities in the cemetery. Uh, I'm assuming that might be what she's referring to. Um, next, uh, Lynn Raker. Again, there are statements from the draft MOA that lead to questions about work encroaching in cemetery. NCDOT will replace the existing trees larger than 12 inch diameter that the undertaking affects along the cemetery boundary and the highway right of way. B, additional areas of concentrated landscaping may be included within the boundaries of Riverside Cemetery uh, adjacent to the highway and will be developed through discussions with the city, parks and recreation department, Chapeau and other concurring parties. Yes, we added into the draft MOA if the cemetery would like us to do some landscaping within their boundaries that is not related to our construction, then we uh, put that stipulation in there as a possible stipulation for the draft MOA. Okay. Um, next, uh, Zoe Shoemaker said we did answer a question. Thank you. Uh, following uh, Michael McDonough again, following up on lighting, can we make sure that the lighting does not spill into the cemetery. I think, I think we caught that in the first one. Um, Mrs. Raker asked to please elaborate on those statements. Um, I don't know which statements those are. Yes, uh, Ms. Raker, can you um, give us a hint of, or tell us what, um, what statements you're referring to. While we're waiting on that, uh, next we have uh, Mr. Ted Bergura. He says, does uh, Mary Pope not understand that tree root damage often occurs outside the construction boundaries from construction occurring within the construction area? This needs to be recognized and any tree damage that occurs due to construction should be remedied. I do understand that. Yes. Okay. Um, Mrs. Uh, Raker says uh, she it was regarding replanting in cemetery property and is already answered. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we don't have. Oh, Mrs. Raker again. Are you aware that there may be unmarked graves in cemetery and these could be near the boundary? This is not confirmed. I am aware of the historic boundary of the cemetery, uh, and that is what I'm aware of. OK. Uh, Ms. Shoemaker, again, understanding that the single most powerful minimization possible for this project is lowering uh, the roadbed, can you please clarify clarify how NCDOT will ensure that the design build contractor appreciates the importance of this design improvement? I think that that uh, those 
that information will be written into the bids for the design build firm. Okay. She says, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, please remember, um, you know, you see the contact information, Kevin's contact information, um, mail, um, email, and uh, also our toll-free project hotline to submit comments. Uh, we have one more by um, from Cynthia Harris. She says, I own property in Montfort. And I want to know how I can best find out the sound and visual effect of, to my property. Where should I inquire? I would say Kevin Moore. Kevin Moore. Um, uh, Mrs. Yoko, Yokoyama, uh, makes, she states, uh, on my property, a tree was killed from root damage done from construction. Uh, done two years earlier. Is this taken into account? We are not taking into account a project from two years ago, but we've heard the concerns about root damage. Okay. Uh, next is Amani Duncan. She asks, how will noise be eliminated from quiet reflection of relatives in cemetery? No. I'm not sure that we can eliminate noise. No. Yeah. Um, next, uh, Ms. Raker again. Given the lack of public interaction in this meeting, do you feel this virtual meeting is adequate replacement for receiving public input per requirement? Um, Mary Pope, you want to say anything or you want me to take that? You can. Uh, we, I do feel that this um, was adequate. Uh, this is a, uh, essentially, it is a public me meeting. Uh, it's been advertised and if people do not participate, I mean, that's not anything that we can control. We just try to make it as accessible as possible. Uh, I believe we've had over 70 individuals on this meeting so i believe we're we are um we're prov providing and getting the word out and um people have an opportunity to participate in this process so i don't feel like we've um slighted anyone and we will mary pope how long are you taking comments oh through july 17th yep so if anyone missed this, uh, we we are recording and we can, um, the beauty of these virtual meetings are that they, they, they're recorded and we can share the video. We can get it posted and uh, you can share it and, um, with anyone, friends and family that can make it. And then they can still provide comment through July 17th. So I feel like we, we're not shorting anyone in this process. Um, next, we have Caroline Lieberman again. She says, I think you can tell there's a lot of passion among our Montford neighborhood um, for the cemetery. I believe for, for all these voices that are expressed, um, that have expressed themselves today, there are hundreds of others who share these concerns. I'm actually at work today and took the time to participate in this session because it is important and meaningful. I'm sure there are so many others that do not have that luxury. Again, uh, Ms. Lieberman, we will, uh, uh, to my other my earlier point, um, we will make this video aware so people can see the presentation, get the um, and, and also hear the, um, the questions that have been asked and, and they will be able to provide feedback um, as well. Amani, uh, next we have Amani Duncan. 
So we will no longer be able to quietly reflect about our loss. That's a question, Mary Pope. <clears throat> I don't have an answer to that question. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, Ted Fakura again. I think the prior question was really, um, will root damage that becomes evident a number of years after construction ends be considered for remediation? I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Ms. Shoemaker again, she says, just FYI, the cards were not received until Friday, June 26. Um, um, thank you for letting us know that. Uh, I, um, I'm pretty sure that may have a lot to do with the post office and uh, uh, their um, delays due to COVID-19. How are you advertising the ability, uh, this is from Lynn Raker, how are you advertising the ability to send comments through July 17th? Uh, we will advertise that on our webpage. Uh, we can also work with you guys at the city of Asheville and any other um, 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 entities or agencies that would like to help us uh, disseminate that information. So. Um, uh, please reach out to us or we'll reach out to you as well. We would like to uh, leverage your networks as well to get the word out. Next, uh, Zoe Shoemaker, again, um, regarding previous comments, postcards for the meeting were not received until Friday, June 26th. And I got that. Uh, Again, I apologize, but once it leaves our, um, once we mail it out, it's outside of our control. Next, we have Amani Duncan again. Have you reached out to residents in the historically Black Hillcrest community? Um, regarding, uh, I don't have the mailing list in front of me of where we sent our postcards. Um, but I can I can look into that and get with the um, project team and find out uh, <clears throat> find out if we um, if we did so. Next, Zoe Shoemaker, uh, can NCDOT post visualizations on the project website? Uh, Mary Pope, would you like to answer that? I believe so. We will ask Kevin Moore for the visualizations and um, getting them up on the website. And she's, she also she goes on to say it would be good to have all three visualizations before and after available to the public. Sure. And the public will have a very difficult time commenting without full visuals. I agree. Thank you, Ms. Shoemaker. Monty Duncan, uh, if so, how did you reach out? Uh, going back to um, the Hillcrest community. Uh, again, we only send newsletter, I mean, uh, postcards out for, for this public meeting. But if you want to have a discussion on our outreach throughout the entire project development process, uh, we can get back to you on that. Uh, Sandra Chappelle, or Chapel. Uh, she asked, what's going on on Hill Street, but really East Lane? If it's outside the historic district, I don't know. Okay. Um, I would ask Kevin Moore. Okay. Next, we have a question from Jenny Wilker. I would like to know where the bottom of the 60 foot wall is at the base outside the wall or at the base of the cemetery side. Uh, 
60 feet above the cemetery seems overwhelming. It is a large wall, and I believe it's it's from the, the bottom of the cemetery. Okay. Uh, next, we uh, Ted Figura again. This root damage very often occurs after construction ends and can take up to five years to become evident. This is not an adequate protection. An arborist should be engaged to evaluate stress that has been placed on any trees within the cemetery due to the I-26 connector construction. All right, thank you. Next, we have a question from Mark Funston. It would be very helpful if renderings that represent the wall height and landscape rel uh, landscape relative heights could be provided. Maybe with some indication of the height relative to a five-story building or some other indicator. Thank you, Mr. Funston. Uh, next, uh, Julie Mayfield. To the question about Hillcrest, the city has met with the Housing Authority and residents on a number of occasions about this project. Not specifically about the cemetery, but about the road design and noise impact. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Amani Duncan again. Has a study been done on the effects of the road on the coyote, black bear, owl, and other animals that reside in the historic cemetery? There are biological assessments that are done as part of the studies for the project, so I would ask to look at those, and you can contact Kevin Moore. That's our default answer today, folks. Call Kevin Moore. <laughs> he has all the answers. Yes, you do not have all the answers. That's right. Uh, thank you, Mary Pope. Uh, next, we have Ms. Uh, Lynn Raker again. The consulting parties have received a request that the city become a signatory for the MOA. Please speak to this. Is that feasible and what would it mean to the process? Uh, NCDOT does not do that. Uh, that would be a question for the Federal Highway Administration. And if you've submitted your request, then I, they will answer you. OK. Uh, uh, Mr. Tony McCochi again. Uh, Again, I apologize if I'm tearing your name up. Is Montfort Hills considered historic eligible as it relates to this project? Uh, there are three historic uh, districts in the Montfort area. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the correct names of all of them in front of me, although I might. Hold on. Um, there is the uh, Montfort Area Historic District, the Montfort Hills Historic District, and the Montfort Hills and High Britain Drive boundary expansion. Uh, only the Montford Area Historic District had an adverse effect because of our project, and that is due to the impacts at Riverside Cemetery. The other two were determined to have no adverse effect on Montford Hills, and the boundary expansion had a no effect. Okay. Thank you, Mary Pope. Um, uh, Julie Mayfield uh, says, to folks asking about the height of the wall, I want to say that NCDOT is working hard to lower the wall as part of evolving designs. While nothing is certain yet, we are optimistic that the wall can be lowered significantly. Thank you, Julie Maker. Uh, Zoe Shoemaker says, I support Ted Figura's comments. We need an arborist engaged as well as the tree survey mentioned earlier. Um, by Lynn Raker. Ms. Raker says Ms. Fur believes the 60 foot wall is measured from the bottom of the cemetery. Should this information be more definite to be part of the MOA discussion? Kevin Moore would have the definite answer on where this wall is measured from. And be that a common theme, that's something that we will uh, definitely get an answer out to you guys about. Um, Amani Duncan says the default answer to contact someone else is inadequate. 
Um, okay, thank you for your comment. Uh, Julie Mayfield um, says, would be great if Kevin could have been a, a part of this meeting to answer people's questions in real time. Much more efficient than asking people to contact him individually. Perhaps the same with FHWA and Mike Dawson. Let's make this easy for people. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mayfield. Um, we'll definitely keep that in mind uh, going forward. Uh, Zoe Shoemaker says, we very much appreciate the work NCD, NCDLT is doing to lower the wall. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have Mr. Ken Putman. Putnam. Uh, the city of Asheville has submitted a letter requesting um, inv inv invited signatory status to FHWA via email, uh, letter, and snail mail. And Tony Makachi, Makochi, again, I'm sorry if I'm tearing up your name, asked, why is Kevin Moore not in this meeting? I think he's participating remotely. Okay. Um, if uh, Kevin, if you're if you're on, um, you could uh, turn your mic on. If do you want to respond to any of those questions? Uh, while we're waiting, if he is on, uh, next, Amani Duncan, again, says, I would like it, I would like it known that I would not like the wall lowered as the sound barrier is very important to me. Okay. For that comment for several people. Yes, um, hold one second. Kevin, let me see what I can do. to attendees, attendees. There he is. Kevin, I turned your mic on. Can you? Yeah, hello. Everyone, I can uh, hear you and I um, appreciate everyone's participation today. This is uh, really good. I appreciate all the the collaboration that we've had with the, the city of Asheville and also with the consulting parties uh, from FHWA and from everyone with NCDOT. Uh, and I appreciate all the, the newcomers that have uh, participated today. That's one of the main goals of this is to uh, get comments and, and feedback and, and ideas from people who have not been part of the process already or may have been to previous public hearings but haven't uh, uh, been involved since then. So this is uh, really important. Uh, several of the comments and questions have been ones that Will be forwarded to me and some of those need some research and some of them such as the wall height and where it's measured from uh, the wall height is measured from the existing ground inside of the highway right-of-way and so that wall height is varying along the whole length of the frontage um, so the, the profile of that wall does change. Uh, what we're talking about as far as the 60 feet or so that is uh, measured at the, one of the higher locations. Uh, if you're facing the highway from the cemetery and looking to the left, uh, the roadway or the, the slope of the cemetery goes down and towards the creek. Um, in that area, the wall will be much taller. And as you move northward and looking to the right, the, the wall will get smaller and smaller as the existing land uh, rises. So 
the the wall height is not consistent and it does vary and uh, then as far as the question about the biological assessment and what um, animals are assessed in there uh, if you give us some contact information we can make those those documents available to you Thank you, Kevin. Uh, appreciate you being on. Um, and uh, next we have a uh, comment by Zoe Shoemaker. Uh, she said, it is my understanding that lowering the wall will not increase, but rather decrease the sound for most of the cemetery and surrounding neighborhoods. Can we get NCDOT to formally respond to this and provide clarification on the general auditory impact of lower, lowering the wall. Um, I, I think that is a um, question for Missy Pear uh, <clears throat> to respond to, and that's something that we will uh, get with her to respond. Um, Mary Pope or Kevin, you, you guys want to take that? I think it's yeah, best I'll take it. to Kevin. Right. Uh, yeah, another noise study, if it's a different alternative, a, a different noise study, would, another noise study would have to be done to determine what those impacts are uh, and how they change. Um, the wall supports two lanes of traffic that are on top of the wall. And then beyond the wall are at least four lanes of traffic that are part of uh, the, the US 1923 highway. So that was down below the wall. So that wall actually does block the noise from the lanes. Uh, and the noise report that was produced that's um, available now, the technical noise report, uh, there shows an actual decrease of noise immediately behind the wall. Uh, the, you know, it's up to 11 or 17 decibels. So the, the noise does decrease uh, as you get closer to the wall, but as, as the cemetery rises in height, then you do realize um, there are some increases in predicted noise levels. So uh, lowering wall is hard to tell, you know, what the result would be. Another noise day would have to be to be done. Um, but uh, as far as what traffic is on top of the wall, there are two lanes of traffic on top of the wall. Other lanes are down below on the opposite side of the wall. And then beyond that are the other areas of the highway that are crossing the river. Jamil, we can't hear you anymore. Oh, sorry, I, I, went, I went on mute. I apologize. The, um, what are you guys seeing right now? Because my screen went out. Ours is blue. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought, okay. You. I didn't touch it. No, no, that was, that was, I, I had some technical difficulties. And let me see if I can get it back up. <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay, we're back. All right. All right, let me get back to questions. Um, uh, oh, I was just a comment from Ms. Shoemaker, um, uh, thanking us for uh, forwarding that question to Missy Pear is very important. Um, that we understand. Thank you, Ms. Shoemaker. Uh, she also adds, if the design is changed significantly, uh, which is what we hope, we will need another noise study. Uh, this has already been confirmed by Missy Pear. Thank you. Anyone else?
Yes, we will wait it um, a few minutes. You have another minute or two. If no one else responds, oh, okay, hold on. Um, a question from Martha Bowles. Uh, Kevin, what do you mean by on top of the wall? Will we see vehicles at the top of the wall from the cemetery? If so, how does sound mitigation, how is sound mitigation possible there? Right, there are two, two lanes of traffic. The wall is there because of the ramp that's coming from US uh, I-240 to join US uh, 192370 and uh, I-26 going westbound. And so there are two lanes that are on top of that wall. That's the need for the wall is to have uh, those lanes and in order to make everything fit together, that's where uh, the alignment ended up. Uh, so it depends on where you are in the cemetery as to whether you would see the wall or see the vehicles. Mary Pope uh, showed the visualization as part of her presentation, which um, from the vantage point that was shown does show some vehicles. So you would be able to see uh, either the top of the vehicle um, or depending on where you are in relationships to that. And we talked about being able to post the visualizations from the different vantage points. Um, and we'll, we'll plan to do that and get that information out to the city and to the consulting parties as to where, where those things are posted, along with the presentation that Mary Pope made. Um, sound mitigation is, part of that process that was already undertaken. Um, and when the project goes forward to design build, when they, that winning design build team uh, works on their final design, they will be required to do another design noise report. So the, their final design will be analyzed again under the, the same guidelines that the technical noise report was done on this preliminary design. And the NCDOT's noise policy would then be applied to the findings of that to determine whether noise walls are reasonable and feasible. And beyond that, um, if one is determined to be reasonable and feasible, a balloting process has to be followed in order to um, actually include that feasible wall. Um, over 50% of the balloted parties have to vote in favor of the wall for it to be included. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, next, uh, Zoe Shoemaker says, the consulting parties are recommending sound mitigation along the roadbed that will be the only feasible noise abatement strategy. That is also why we uh, want minimization measures. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. William Eakins. The purpose of a larger highway is to have traffic move faster, decrease congestion at, uh, and decrease congestion at peak times. The, tradi the traditional method to do this was to increase lanes. As the least lanes would have the least impact, has the DOT considered the use of modern speed limit signs that change according to traffic conditions? Such signage decreases congestion by keeping traffic flowing, so it is less likely to bunch. When traffic does become congested, congested such signage reduces traffic slowing accidents. Kevin, do you want to take a stab at that one or? We would need to speak with our um, traffic engineering department to see if um, what the state is doing about changeable speed limits. 
Uh, I'm not aware of any locations within North Carolina currently, um, but but we can certainly ask that question to find out what uh, what they would consider. Um, as far as the purpose of the project and the statement that was made as far as moving vehicles quicker, um, I believe really the, the, the purpose is really to move things more efficiently. Um, so I don't know that quicker, but the efficiently, I think is probably a better description of what the intent is uh, to decrease delay um, by decreasing congestion, but uh, certainly not to build more lanes than necessary. Um, but uh, the goal is to move things more efficiently and definitely safely. Mm -hmm. uh, next, um, uh, Ms. Shoemaker uh, again says, one advantage of noise barriers on the roadbed is that it will also provide visual relief. Cars won't be as, visual, as, as visible. Um, she goes on. Uh, say we need a noise abatement beyond standard NCDOT policy that is a uh, point of the section 106 guidance on noise abatement for sensitive landscapes. Mary Poe, do you want to say anything there? Um, our effects, uh, we took into account the noise studies as they've been done so far. And uh, we believe that the current designs do not require a additional noise walls on top of the retaining wall. Um, next question is from Michael McDonough. He says, Mary Pope, uh, you are conveying resentment and annoyance about having to address our concerns this morning. We are all just citizens taking time out of our day to participate you're being paid by us to participate, and it is your job to work with the public to protect our historic resources. After joining this meeting, I have less confidence that you are sympathetic about legitimate concerns to this resource as the project moves forward. Would you like to defend yourself or say anything? Uh, I, I believe I've worked very hard on this project for many, many years in order to identify and protect resources. Right. Um, next, we have uh, another comment by Mrs. Yokoyama, Jane Yokoyama. Um, can, can Kevin address the construction noise when services are being held? Um, I would have to talk with our construction unit and the resident engineers um, in the division to see how how that's been handled on on previous occasions, and um, so I, I can't answer that myself. Yeah, I wonder if that's something that we could be added to RFP or is how how is that handled? It's a good question. Um, uh, any any more questions, comments? Again, we do appreciate you all taking time out of your day to participate in this process. It is important um, that uh, public stays involved in the process throughout um, not only planning, but the project development process. Um, and, and you guys in uh, Asheville have always been and active and, and very engaged. So we do appreciate that. All right. Oh, okay. Ms. Yokoyama says thank you. Ms. Raker says thank you. Well, um no one has anything else we will um move to uh, adjourn this meeting and uh again as you see on the screen 
there. Um, see Kevin's contact information. Um, if you like, we should have put his cell phone number up there. <laughs> I'm joking, Kevin. But, but yeah, please uh, reach out to Kevin if you have any uh, further questions. And um, again, thank you for joining us this morning and being a part of this project. With that, I will go ahead and close the meeting. Uh, everyone stay safe, well, and um, we will talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you, Jamil. Thank you. Thank you, Jamil. Thank you, Mayor Pope. And thank you, everyone, for, for your participation.